Previously on Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, I can't take it anymore. Just break through the glass. We got to get to the Padre. He walks in there and he's like, Madison? Oh, the Madison? Uh, June? You give them their weapons back right now. The big motherfucker that was behind the fucking mirror the whole time was the freaking little scrawny son. Madison just goes through that mirror and you got the, the fucking young guy that's like, huh? You shouldn't be back here. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? You know, out of all these years in the Walking Dead universe, I never thought I could be so sad and happy to a character death. Help! Help! Oh, rest in peace, Dwayne. You damn right, rest in peace, Dwayne. Hey guys, it's Dan, your host of Dan's Reviews, and today I'm back for another video for Fear of the Walking Dead, and in today's video we're going to be doing our weekly review for this week's episode of the final season. This is for episode 4, titled King County. Dad, help me! I waited too long. Listen, baby, I'm coming for you. They will kill you if you don't tell them what happened. Alright guys, this one's going to be doing a review today, this one's going to be doing a review for Fear of the Walking Dead, and in today's video we're back with our weekly review for this week's episode of Fear of the Walking Dead, this is our review for Season 8, Episode 4, titled King County, the final season, so, um, wow, 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 <laughs> wow, okay, so, yeah, I don't even know where to start with this one. I, I really, really don't. I guess I'll get started with, um, you know, spoiler warning, although you probably should have been out of here by now. But, you know, again, I'll, I'll put more warnings at the beginning of this video. But this episode, from beginning to end, absolutely captivated me. So we get started, right, and Morgan goes to King County. It, it just starts like that. Right off the bat, the episode just begins. So Morgan, at the end of episode two, escaped Padre. Now here he is. He's using like a uh, like a sign or whatever uh, to kill walkers with. And he walks up to the house that Dwayne um, was in. Apparently the cellar that he was checking out uh, when Jenny, of course, bit Dwayne. And, of course, ate him alive, uh, based off the story that Morgan told back in Season 3 of The Walking Dead. Uh, it was this house that he went to, and this is the house that Dwayne died in. And this is the house that he assumes he's still in. Now, Morgan can't really bring it to himself to kill him quite yet. You know, he hears Dwayne's voice in his head. He kind of runs away from the house. And, basically, he starts killing a bunch of walkers. You know, he lets his anger out. And he, you know, he's like, hey, I'm right here, you know, which is also a really cool callback. And he starts killing, you know, zombie after zombie. He just can't quite take it yet. Um, so that was a phenomenal uh, opening scene. Uh, Lenny James is acting and emotions in that scene was absolutely incredible. Now, after the intro, we then see um, Grace. Uh, she arrives to King County uh, with Mo, who was hiding in the back of the truck. Uh, we found out that they both escaped Padre. And basically, Mo tells both Morgan and uh, Grace that Madison, and Daniel are building an army to fight Padre. Morgan is in agreement that they, you know, they should join them, but uh, of course they have to put down Dwayne first before they join any kind of army to take down Padre. So we find that out. Now, with the three of them, Morgan, Grace, and Mo, of course, they got uh, kind of like the, the core family back in this one. And I like it, too, because in this episode, Morgan even acknowledges, like, yes, I am your father. Yes, uh, that is your mother. Uh, we aren't, you know, exactly your mom and dad, but we are going to, you know, uh, raise you like you are, you know, so they're, they're not going along with Padre's crap anymore, which is good. Um... And anyway, now we get uh, Dwight and Sherry. So they come after Morgan in this episode, and we find out that the reason why they're coming after him is so that if they trade Morgan in, they can maybe get uh, Finch out of Padre, right? So that's why they want to take Morgan captive and take him back to Padre, which ma you know makes a lot of sense. That's their kid. And I really thought that Dwight and Sherry's motives actually made a lot of sense in this episode because Morgan did sell them out like seven years ago on those rafts, you know, and got them captured by Padre for seven Seven years. So to be honest, they kind of went easy on Morgan and they kind of, you know, uh, went the high road instead of, you know, making things really bad. Um, so I understand their motives. I actually completely understand why Dwight and Sherry are doing that is because, you know, for one, Padre is with them. They're trying to capture Morgan. But second, Morgan did sell them out on the rafts. And part of me kept forgetting that, but it makes a little bit more sense now to why Morgan uh, is being chased by Dwight and Sherry. 
and why Sherry and Dwight are doing this to begin with. It makes a lot of sense. You know, they want their kid back. If they take Morgan, they might have a chance, and um, that's all they're they're fighting for is their kid, right? So it makes sense, absolutely. And, you know, they, they don't want their kid to be, you know, raised in Padres. So, again makes a lot more sense to me. So they run away from Dwight and Sherry. They uh, try to escape because they got to kill Dwayne before they do anything else. And they go into the old season one house. So we do see the old classic season one house with the boarded up windows. Uh, we see, you know, the, the setting, it's completely the same. Whoever designed uh, this house to make it look like season one did a phenomenal job. Uh, it looked absolutely perfect and exactly like it did in the Walking Dead season one. It was flawless looking absolutely amazing um and anyway they're in this house basically uh you've got morgan that explains that this is where he stayed at with Dwayne before he died um and of course uh, they kind of stay the night they try to hide in this house from dwight and sherry and padre and you know the rest of them or whatever and such a small detailed scene but i figured i'd mention it i love the fact that they're sitting around like that dinner table and you've got like the candles that are lit and stuff like that and they're sitting there talking about Dwayne and they're talking about Jenny and stuff like that because that's right there in that scene is where Rick and Morgan had like their first major conversation while they were sitting around the table. I kind of thought like for a minute that they would sit down and like eat or something and like they would do their, their blessings and stuff and hold hands. You know what I mean? Like that would have been really cool, but maybe they didn't want to overdo it. But you know, that would have been amazing if they, uh, if they did that, I, I would have loved it. Um, but anyway, so they go up, uh, you know, of course, upstairs, of course, you know, you you got Dwight that's coming after Morgan. And anyway, we then reveal that upstairs of this house is painted clear, clear. You were supposed to clear, clear. And Mo is asking the question like, you know, what's clear? Like, Dad, what's what's that? And Morgan just kind of sits there and he's like kind of, you know, struggling a little bit. He's got like those wide eyes, right? That Lenny James does every time he's stressed out, you know? So uh, Lenny James, man, an incredible actor. Um, but he answers everything. You know, he says that this rifle that I have right here, this is the one that a guy named Rick Grimes gave me, which just gave me such chills. I absolutely love that. And, you know, Grace convinces Morgan, like, Rick gave you that gun for a reason. You use it, right? And Morgan has the rifle in his hand, and he's looking out, and Dwight, Sherry, and Padre are leading a whole bunch of walkers towards the house. Some on fire, some that aren't. Uh, they're trying to get them out of that house because they got to get their kid back, so they're chasing down Morgan. Um... Morgan holds out the rifle, and this scene, guys, is so damn good. I mean, they literally film it the same way. With Morgan with the rifle, he's standing outside the window, pointing the rifle down, and it's filmed the same way. And in addition to that, throughout the episode, Morgan starts having these hallucinations that his wife, Jenny, is still out there on the street, walking out there as a walker after all these years. So incredible. And from the look of the actress, like, it looks like they got the same actress back. Unless I'm tripping, but it looks like they got the same actress back to play that same walker, which is incredible if they did. That That is absolutely incredible. Um, They even, like, you know, brought some, like, family photos back in this one as well. I mean, so, so, so cool. I absolutely love what they did with it. Um, but anyway, they make a run for it. They make a run, you know, out there. You do have a one funny scene where like Grace and Morgan kind of kiss each other and Mo doesn't really know, you know, what kissing is all about. So she's like, ew, I don't want to ever see that again, you know? <laughs> um, and then Grace kisses Mo or whatever. She just kind of rolls her eyes. Um, but anyway, they fight a bunch of the dead. They fight a bunch of walkers out there. Uh, Morgan is still hallucinating his wife being in front of him, which is which is really cool. Um, and Dwight and the others take Morgan and uh, Grace captive. Mo is now trapped inside of the house, and Grace and Morgan, uh, you know, of course, captured. So. Um, they're, of course, going to kill Morgan, but Morgan said that the reason why he's down there is so he could put his son down, right? So Dwight and Sherry honor that, and they take Morgan to the house that Dwayne was supposedly in. And when they get there, Dwayne is gone. Dwayne is not there. The corpse of his dead wife is there. Yes, she is down there. Um, and we do reveal her death, like, fully now, you know, like, not even as a walk or just a corpse, right? And um, anyway, basically, we don't know where Dwayne is. And I remember at this part of the episode... I remember at this part of the episode, I was kind of sitting there. I was like, 
Man, I swear to God, if these stupid fan theories about Dwayne being alive are coming true right now. Because here's the thing, right? And I guess I'll kind of explain for anybody that doesn't know. I cannot stand the Dwayne is alive theory. I could not stand it. I could not stand when people were going out there and saying, oh yeah, Dwayne is alive. And oh, Dwayne's out there. And Dwayne's this. And Dwayne's that. You know what I mean? And I don't know about y'all, but I couldn't stand those. Because... Dwayne's death is what molded Morgan into what he is now. You know what I mean? Like, without that death, without that trauma, you wouldn't have these amazing arcs that Morgan has. It's because of Dwayne's death that he lost his mind. You know what I mean? So having him be alive would have made no sense. And I remember when Dwayne's corpse wasn't in that house, I was like, you have got to be kidding me right now. Like, you know, Dwayne is not in that house. Like, are you freaking serious right now? And, um, yeah, Morgan is just kind of sitting there. Padre is ready to execute him now. And, um, we get another callback, which was incredible. Morgan holds the rifle to his head and he's like, yeah, you want it? Do it. Like, I'm ready. And I kind of wish they did this. This would have been really cool if the writers did this. I was waiting for Morgan to say, please, please kill me, you know? Um, he didn't do that, but whatever. It, the, the concept was there. The scene was good. And I, uh, I loved it. I thought it was incredible. So anyway, Dwight and Sherry then flip on Padre. They flip on the guards, of course, because they're not going to watch Morgan get killed. That's what they tell him. And anyway, they radio Finch and Finch is standing right there. And I love it too, because Dwight tells him, he just has to tell him like some trick that he taught him or something. And he knocks uh, Shriek out and knocks her out, you know, out cold. And she goes down and then apparently he is going to get on a like, you know, emergency raft that is arriving in 20 minutes. He's going to sneak on and he's going to meet Dwight and Sherry. So that is what he does. Pretty, pretty tough kid. I, I got to tell you, I mean, he did a pretty damn good job. Um, I don't know how he got past the guards, but you know, pretty, uh, pretty damn good job. Right. Um, so yeah, that was awesome. But uh, anyway, Dwight and Sherry now are, are going to be getting their kid back. That's, you know, set in, uh, set in stone. And now Morgan has to then go and find Mo because um, Mo is, you know, literally in that house. It's burning down. Uh, she's, you know, about to die. So Morgan has to go in there. And this was without a doubt my favorite scene of the episode. Morgan takes the rifle that Rick gave him. He goes in the old house that's burning down. Mo goes in the attic, as Morgan suggests, of course. He's hallucinating Jenny in the street. It's not really her, but he's losing his mind. Um, he goes upstairs, and Mo finds Zombie Dwayne tied in the attic. Tied up, sitting there. Um, incredible. Incredible scene. And it made it even more beautiful that his daughter now, you know is about to get eaten alive by Dwayne. And that's what happened to Dwayne is that, you know, his mom, of course, you know, ate him alive and whatever. So this is the same type of situation. One of Morgan's loved ones is about to eat somebody he cares about, you know. And this time he uses the rifle and he actually shoots Dwayne. He puts him down and saves his kid. I mean, that... I don't know who in the world wouldn't love that scene. That scene is probably my favorite scene in Fear the Walking Dead. That is, oh my goodness, absolutely incredible scene. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah, um, that scene had me kind of emotional, not gonna lie. Uh, that was amazing. And he finally puts Dwayne and Jenny to rest. That's, that's that. So, wow. Um, I really don't have words for that. That is absolutely insane. And... You know, you think the whole episode's over, you think everything's done, and then we get the major cliffhanger of this episode, as if there wasn't enough already in this episode. Um, Grace, in this one, saves Mo from another walker at the very end, and unfortunately she's bit. So, Grace now is bit, she is probably going to die. And then Morgan at the very end of the episode remembers that Finch, of course, Dwight and Sherry's kid, was cured by Padre. So he's going to try his damnness to actually save Grace in time, hopefully, and save her life, right? Now, I know a lot of people will probably say, uh, this scene wasn't too good, you know, the whole cure idea. I actually love it because Morgan is in denial and he knows that Finch survived that bite. So if he knows there's a possibility for Grace to survive, he obviously is going to try to save Grace. And that is exactly what he does. Um, and meanwhile, you get Finch and Dwight that, of course, uh, you know, have a reunion. Uh, they're all together now. And at the very end of the episode, Morgan is in a panic because now Grace is bit and he is trying to save her life. 
And that is how it ends. They're trying to get her to June and they're going to try to save Grace's life. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. So, um, this was a out of this world episode. Um, I've never had such a emotion to a character like Morgan. And I think that's the main reason why, um, it's putting all of those puzzle pieces to rest. Uh, Dwayne is finally dead. Finally, those stupid theories can be to rest. Um, we saw season one locations. We saw amazing callbacks. The way they filmed it, the way they did everything. I mean, it was so good. I've never had such a connection to a Fear of the Walking Dead episode. Absolutely flawless. Absolutely flawless episode. So I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. If I could give it a higher ranking, I would, but I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What did you think of episode four of the final season of Fear of the Walking Dead? And if you knew the channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the views for Fear of the Walking Dead. Make sure to follow me at Dan's The Walking Dead Reviews on Instagram, guys. And of course, I'll see you guys really soon for more videos for Fear of the Walking Dead. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and peace out.